Anna from GMSA. From this video, I will be covering the human development part in your fifth unit, Animal Form and Function. So let's proceed. Human Development In this session, we are focusing our attention on six main topics. The first is fertilization or the conception and the formation of human zygote. The second is cleavage of the zygote, blastocyst form formation and implantation. The third is embryonic membranes or fetal membranes. The fourth is placenta and umbilical cord. The fifth is pregnancy and its duration. The sixth and the last topic is the major fetal changes in each trimester. Growth of a new human being starts when an ovium is fertilized by a sperm and this usually happens in the oviduct. During the development of the individual within the mother's uterus, a sequence of events occurs from the fertilization to the birth. This normally ends in 38 weeks or roughly 9 months. The first 8 weeks of human development is known as the embryonic period. Thereafter, the developing individual in the uterus is called a fetus. Fertilization or the conception and the formation of the human zygote. During ovulation, a secondary oocyte arrested at the metaphase 2 enters the oviduct. You all know that there is a glycoprotein layer present between the oocyte's plasma membrane and the surrounding cells. During fertilization, a sperm enters the secondary oocyte, penetrating the epithelial cells surrounding the oocyte and the glycoprotein layer. Once the sperm enters the secondary oocyte, meiosis II of the oocyte is completed, forming a mature ovium. Both of these mature ovium and the sperm, both of them contains a set of haploid pronuclei in each. A haploid pronuclei is a pronuclei which contains one set of unpaired chromosomes. Subsequently, the two haploid pronuclei of the mature ovum and the sperm fuse to form a diploid single cell known as the zygote. The fusion of the haploid nuclei of the sperm and the mature ovum is called as the fertilization. Fertilization takes place in the upper reaches of the oviduct within 12 to 24 hours after the ovulation. Cleavage of the zygote, last cyst formation and implantation. About 24 hours after the fertilization, a series of rapid mitotic cell divisions take place in the zygote. This is known as the cleavage. The cleavage of the zygote begins in the oviduct as it moves forward towards the uterus by ciliary and peristaltic movements. So the cilia in the oviduct and the peristaltic movements, these are the rhythmic wave-like contractions and relaxations of the muscles. These movements help the zygote or the cleavage of zygote to move forward towards the uterus. Cleavage continues forming a solid ball of cells. We call it as the morula. About three to four days after the fertilization, this morula reaches the uterine cavity and gets nutrition by the endometrium secretions. About five days after the fertilization, a large fluid-filled cavity this is formed surrounding the ball of cells. With the formation of this cavity, the de this developing stage is referred to as the blastocyst. 
Further rearrangements of the cells in the blastocyst result in two distinct structures, inner cell mass and the tropoblast. The inner cell mass is located internally and eventually develops into the embryo and the membranes enclosing the embryo are called the amniotic sac. The tropoblast, which is the outer layer of cells, will ultimately develop into the fetal portion of the placenta. The placenta contains two portions, the fetal on the embryonic portion and the maternal portion. So the tropoblast is important because it will ultimately develop into the fetal portion of the placenta. Around seven days after fertilization, the blastocyst attaches itself to the endometrium of the mother's uterus. This is called as the implantation. As the blastocyst implants, the inner cell mass orient towards the endometrium or faces towards the endometrium. The tropoblast grows outward and invades the endometrium. This is initiated by the enzyme secreted by the tropoblast to break down the uterine lining. Then the tropoblast extends finger-like projections into the endometrium. The tropoblast begins to secrete HCG or human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone which has the action similar to LH, the luteinizing hormone. The hormone HCG rescues the corpus luteum from the degeneration and sustains its secretion of progesterone and estrogen, which maintain the uterine lining, preventing menstruation. So as this rescues the corpus luteum and sustains its secretion of the progesterone and estrogen, we can say that it has an action similar to the luteinizing hormone. After the implantation, three germ cell layers are formed in the developing embryo at the end of the gastrulation stage. Extraembryonic membranes begin to appear which surround the embryo. The placenta is formed by the cells of tropoblast and the adjacent endometrial tissues. Now we are going to talk about the embryonic membranes or the fetal membranes. There are four new extra embryonic membranes which appear after the implantation. They are chorion, amnion, yolk sac and the allantois. They provide a life support system for further embryonic development. The chorion becomes the main embryonic portion of the placenta and which is the structure for the exchange of materials between the fetus and the mother. Chorion produces HCG. It is an important hormone of pregnancy. Amnion is a protective membrane surrounding the embryo or the fetus, creating a fluid-filled cavity which serves as a shock absorber and helps to prevent desiccation. Yolk sac contributes to the cells that will become blood cells until the fetal liver takes over. It is also the source of the primordial germ cells that migrate to the developing gonads. The primordial germ cells are highly specialized cells that are precursors of the gametes. The gonads are sex organs that produces gametes specifically a testicle or an ovary. Allantois, the fourth embryonic membrane. It serves as an early site for blood formation and is associated with the development of the urinary bladder. The placenta. During the first two to four weeks of embryonic development, the embryo obtains nourishment directly from the endometrium. Eventually, the embryonic tropoblast and the mother's endometrium intermingles to form the placenta. 
The placenta is a disc-shaped organ formed by two parts. They are the embryonic or the fetal portion formed by the chorionic villi of the chorion and the maternal portion formed by the endometrium. The placenta contains both embryonic and the fetal blood vessels. However, the maternal and the fetal blood vessels do not join and the blood they carry do not normally mix. The placenta mediates the exchange of material between the embryonic and the blood mother's circulatory system. They are the materials such as nutrition, respiratory gases and metabolic waste. The placenta supplies oxygen and nutrition to the fetus from the maternal bloodstream. This helps to excrete waste products from the fetus to the maternal bloodstream. The placenta helps to provide, provide immune protection to the developing embryo or the fetus. And also this produces hormones like HCG and progesterone which are which help to sustain the pregnancy. The umbilical cord. It is a flexible cord-like structure which contains blood vessels and attaches the embryo or the fetus to the placenta during gestation. The oxygen-poor blood from the embryo and the fetus travels to the placenta through the two arteries of the umbilical cord and passes to the finger-like projections of the placenta where oxygen and nutrition are acquired. The fetal blood or the oxygen-rich blood leaves the placenta through the umbilical vein leading back to the embryo or the fetus. Pregnancy and its duration. The pregnancy or gestation is the condition of carrying one or more developing offsprings inside the uterus of a female. Human pregnancy period is usually 38 weeks from fertilization to birth, or roughly you can say 9 months, or 40 weeks from the last menstruation to birth. The 9 months of pregnancy are divided into three trimesters of about three months each. First, we are going to talk about the changes happening in the mother. During the first trimester, the implanted embryo secretes hormones to regulate mother's reproductive system and to indicate its presence, the presence of the embryo. The HCG hormone secreted by the embryo maintains the corpus luteum in the ovary to secrete progesterone and estrogen. Some amount of this HCG passes from the maternal blood to the urine. The presence of HCG in pregnant mother's blood and urine can be easily detected and therefore is used as an early pregnancy detection test. The high levels of progesterone brings about rapid changes in the mother. Both ovulation and the menstrual cycle stop. The maternal side of the placenta grows and the breast and the uterus get larger. The mucus in the cervix of the mother forms a plug and this prevents the fetus from infections. Most of the mothers experience morning sickness. This is the general term during the first trimester. By the second trimester, the level of HCG declines and as a result, the corpus luteum deteriorates. But the placenta takes over the production of progesterone and estrogen, which helps to maintain the pregnancy. Mother can feel fetal, fetal movements and as the fetal, fetus grows, the mother's abdominal organs become compressed and displaced. In the third trimester of the pregnancy, this may lead 
as the mother's abdominal organs become compressed and displaced by the secondary trimester. This may lead to digestive blockage and frequent urination. Major fetal changes in each trimester. In the first trimester, this is the most critical stage of development during which the rudiments of all major organ systems appear. This is the main period of organogenesis. Organogenesis is the development of the body organs. The heart begins to beat by the fourth week, but this can be detected at 8 to 10 weeks. By the eighth week, the embryo is said to be the fetus. As I mentioned earlier, as all the parts of an adult are present in the rudimentary form. At the end of the first trimester, the fetus is well differentiated and about 5 to 7 centimeters long. The second trimester. By the end of second trimester, the fetus assumes distinctly the hu human features. The organ systems are completely developed in this stage. During the second trimester, the fetus grows up to uh, about 30 centimeters in length and is very active so that the mother may feel the fetal movements. The third trimester. The third trimester represents a period of rapid fetal growth. During the early stage of this period, most of the organ systems become fully functional. During the third trimester, the fetus grows to about 50 cm in length and weighs about 3 to 4 kg. The fetal activity decreases as it fills the space within the uterus. So that's the end of the lesson today. Hope it was useful to you. All the best for your upcoming level exam and for your future lessons you can refer to our upcoming videos in our channel. So thank you for joining us. Goodbye.